Now you come and, and say, Don Corleone, give me justice. But you don't ask with respect. You don't offer friendship. You don't even think to call me Godfather. Brilliant. Wow. <laughs> That's fucking good. Yes. I was enamored with the idea of our generation dealing with the zombie apocalypse. How would we deal with it? Because we've seen what Romero thought of his generation, you know, so many times. Mm. We've seen, um, I would say, I don't know, if, I would say Shaun of the Dead is probably uh, the Gen Xers as opposed to millennials. So yeah. I, I, for me, it was like, what would millennials do? in the zombie apocalypse and what would Irish millennials do in a zombie apocalypse? And the more yeah. that was milling over in my mind, I, was, I thought there's so many possibilities with this. Please welcome our first guest, Adam William Cahill. Welcome to the show. How are you doing? Good to see you. It's been a while. Ah, it has been a while. Um, 2018. Yes. Yeah. Three years. Although at this stage, that doesn't feel that long ago, considering how fast the last two years have gone. It's mad how they flew, right? Yeah. It's crazy. It's insane. So we did something together. I did um, a casting call for extras for Rockstar Karaoke. Uh, so some people might know that project. And you came up and played, performed an absolute stormer of "Let Me Entertain You" on stage at Grand Social. <laughs> Yeah, uh, that was the, the song of choice for everybody, right? That everybody, everybody sang everybody it. Everybody sang it. So we had a great gauge of how everybody did. And, and you're a fantastic singer, I have to say. Uh, thank you, I appreciate that. Yeah. I, uh, I, I don't think I made it into the final cut of the, of the ad somehow, though. I don't remember no, seeing myself, did. did I? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Jesus. No, I, I'll have to resend that to you. No, you're definitely in it. Um, I remember you in it because we, we definitely had to select that because it was we had such a variety of different singers, which was great. That was the idea yeah, yeah, of it. No. So we had so many people in. But no, you did make it. You mustn't have watched it. <laughs> the full feature, you're probably just like, ah, yeah, yeah. I've, I'm I've, sure I'm in there somewhere. I'm sorry, in there somewhere. Yeah, I'll just, I'll just put my name on it and then just put it on my demo reel. No, it um, was a seriously eclectic group, like the all ages, different people who like rock music, pop music, like a bit of everything in there, yeah. and everyone did their own stint on it. So it was, it was really, really good. Yeah. Do you find that as well when casting for extras? Do you get a variety of different? Um, people that come come to those castings it depends on what you're looking for if you put out mm. a call for a very specific you know demographic then that's what's going to turn up and then but if you're if it's just an, an open one then yeah you do you tend to get a kind of a wide range we were very fortunate when we were when we did um the extras casting for follow the dead we had a we we needed a, a, a because the scene involved was like a town hall scene it mm. needed to be you know old people, young people, men, women, mixture, it, of everything. mixture of everything. And we did, that's what we got. So we were very yeah. fortunate in that sense. Yeah. How, how does it work? Like, do you, so you do, I mean, you do a, you wear a variety of hats uh, when doing, well, over the course of your film career, really, right? Yeah. Um, now you mentioned that you're not doing acting as much now as, as more so directing. Yeah. How did that kind of transition? What was that kind of transition for you then where you said, okay, I'm going to focus more on, on directing now and writing. What was that kind of for you? I think probably like a lot of people when they first fall in love with filmmaking in general, if you get any notions whatsoever of, of wanting to be part of that community and part of that industry, your, your first thought runs to acting. Yeah. And so that's what it was for me. And then I went and decided that, um, I know it's a really difficult industry to break into no matter where you are in the world. Mm -hmm. And um, what I decided to do was I, I was uh, I wanted to go and study film production so that I could make my own films and then cast myself in them. Brilliant. But then while I was in college, in my final year project where I had to write and direct and produce a short film, by the time that I saw the actors that I had cast perform what I had written, I just fell in love with the the process of of making it from behind the scenes. I loved that that these guys were putting their heart and soul into words that didn't exist until I put them on paper, and then we built the set from scratch for the for oh. the for the film. Oh. Um, everything came together to make something that you know it was it, like I felt like more than more than acting. Like act, there's no way acting could possibly make me just who I am yeah. feel as as fulfilled as sure. being behind the scenes, pulling all the strings, to be honest. Yeah. So I, I mean, I, I, I enjoy acting. I'm not saying I'll never do it again, but it's certainly something that's taken a massive backseat for me because I just love writing my own stuff and producing my own stuff. That's great. And, and I mean, that, that first uh, short film was in 2017, is it Inertia? So, yeah, 20, 2016, I think, is that when that came out. Inertia, yeah, you're 2016, right. 2016, so that yeah. was Tig, uh, Devery, and mm -hmm. Mary Beth Heron. Absolutely, well, yeah. Right? So, Who also made it into Follow the Dead because we kept a very close relationship ah, and fantastic. they're tremendous actors, so. Yeah, yeah, fantastic. And, and what is like the scene like, I mean, um, like, is it, 
is it difficult to kind of bring people together for for a shooting? Like, how is the process for you? Like, I mean, the producer, I guess, takes care of a lot of the kind of nitty gritty organizing. Do you do you produce as well? With, yeah, when you, you have to. I mean, look, when you say that? when you're saying that I that I wear all hats, it's not necessarily just because I'm a control freak, which I am, but like, and I want to kind of be involved in every single aspect of uh, making mm. my stuff. But it's also because when you're starting out there's no budget, which means that you can't afford to pay a producer, pay a director or pay a writer, whatever. So I have to do all of those things, yeah. but I love it. So I, I will always work that way, to be honest. I mean, some of the kind of smaller jobs that I would do as well, I'd probably, uh, uh, if the budget got bigger, I would, st I would start getting other people involved, but I'm very, very happy to do an awful lot of it myself. I just love, I, I love the business. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, like I, there's this, even, even though Ireland is a very small country, you'd be surprised the amount of talent out there and the people out there who, who are so eager to get into the industry. I don't find it very difficult at all. If I'm looking for any kind of crew member or any cast member, you would, there's plenty of people out there to choose from. It's, it's a that's really, great. it's a rich industry uh, in spite of the fact that it's such a small country. Yeah, that's, that's, that's really interesting because you would think that it might be a bit tricky to kind of typecast somebody but I guess there's so much variety in Ireland, isn't it? Like it, yeah. Dublin has become such a melting pot as well of so many different nations. So it's you can kind of find almost everybody that you might need, you know, for a yeah. film, uh, which is fantastic. But yeah, product, doing the producing producer work as well as then directing and, and, and writing is a, is, a, is a massive task. And you finished college only last year and you just went straight into a film, right? So you yeah. went straight into writing. And as soon as I finished, uh, it was a Two years ago, I um, I yeah, when I immediately was like, uh, well, actually, I was inspired because uh, Luke Horker, who plays the lead in Follow the Dead, came to me with a short film script, which was the, the kernel of what Follow the Dead ended up being. So it was a, a short film called Crack of the Dead that he dreamt up one night, and he just kind of had this funny. He's a very he, anything that he writes, he's a writer as well, and anything that he writes. Um, is it's laced with comedy. It's 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 always the direction that he goes with his stuff, and um, I I just found it really amusing. So we decided to yeah look I I definitely want to get involved in this. Um, so we started uh, trying to get it off the ground. Unfortunately, because we had a few location issues at the time, it ended up getting put on the long finger. But because I was so, I was enamored with the idea of our generation dealing with the zombie apocalypse. How would we deal with it? Because we've seen what Romero thought of his generation, you know, so many times. Mm. We've seen, um, I would say, I don't know, if, I would say Shaun of the Dead is probably uh, the Gen Xers as opposed to Millennials. So yeah. I, I, for me, it was like, what would Millennials do in the zombie apocalypse? And what would Irish Millennials do in a zombie apocalypse? And the more yeah. that was milling over in my mind, I, was, I thought there's so many possibilities with this. And I ended up c coming back to him and I said, look, man, I've, I've got a hundred page script that's kind of, loosely based on what on the, the characters that he had originally came up with yeah and uh he was just delighted that now it was a feature and you know Fantastic. that's that's how we uh how it, it took off after that it was just um it it, it, it kind of had a life of its own yeah it sounds cliche but it really did yeah i guess a lot of cliches kind of are are factual almost yeah. in a way isn't it so you had the ball rolling and then it, it almost just kind of grew and grew as you went along you took out a bank loan as well i, I read in, in your imdb to kind of fund everything yeah um how how is it like, for example, like submitting the film then like, you know, to, to festivals? Is that a process in itself? Do you need to register? How, how does that kind of work? Because I have no idea how it sort of works. Submitting to festivals? Yeah, stuff like that. And, and maybe do you need to register with unions and things like that? Is that all part of the no, process? No, no, no. Like it depends on, on uh, it's mostly done through, through um, specific websites. You've got Film Freeway and you've got, um, oh, there's another one, something fest. I never used that one, so <laughs> that's mm. I can't remember. But Film Freeway mainly. So you, you set up your, your company. Um, so for me, it's obviously Wild Stag Productions. Yeah. Um, and then you would create your project. So I have Inertia, Follow the Dead, Loose Thread on there. Yeah. And, and whenever, um, like I can search then all the different festivals that are available and I will submit to the ones that I think are the, the ones that are most apt for whatever project that I'm, I'm trying to send it on to. And there's no, yeah. there's, like, there's no, it's, it's really not difficult. Once you have yeah. um, proof that your, like, uh, your work is copyrighted, it's all your own stuff, you're not using anybody else's material, the festivals don't look into it then too, too much more than that. They're just like, okay, if, if you're saying that's okay, you've signed the contract basically online, da -da -da -da, yes, yeah. I, I agree to this. Um, then, you know, there's no, they don't, they don't have to be concerned about the implications. So, okay. so I, I know that all of my stuff is my own work. It's not plagiarized. Yeah. And it's a, yeah, it's a very, very easy process. That's great. And then, so you set up Stag Productions then, uh, 
to to sort of submit them to to festivals and things like that. Yeah. And, and when did you? So you set that up pretty much when you started. Follow yeah. the Dead, or was it before? And, and yeah, so I, I set up Wildstack Productions as as a, a a business name first. I was just kind of um, trading under Wildstack Productions, but mm. in the, like I think it was within the, within the last twelve months. I'm pretty sure um, I, it's now a limited company. Right. Um, wow. So I just wanted to make sure that everything was on the up and up. When especially now that things are kind of getting a bit more serious, where I am looking I'm, instead of like I don't, I don't think I would ever be able to. Um, fund another feature myself because I, you know, I crippled myself for a so few years. There's so many bank loans you can take out, right? <laughs> exactly, there really is. I mean, like you, you, when you're starting out, you definitely need to invest in yourself. Yeah. Nobody else will. You, no one trusts, no one believes in you more than you do. Oh, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So you gotta, you really gotta uh, back yourself, back the people who, you, who are on your team, who you trust. But at this stage now, I'm like, okay, I, I'm going to be going to investors for future future films, and so having a limited company and having everything. Uh, official yeah it's going to be make things so Obviously much easier for me assist and, you, and you've got some great movies under your belt now as well so you can sort of present that and um, so we have a scene from uh follow the dead and uh keith are you going to put that up for us if you ask nicely maybe <laughs> all right please jesus <laughs> heck's sake no i will i will get up for you there now guys go on he's just stalling now because he doesn't have it lined up he's like oh uh, jesus uh, wait uh, oh, uh, i forgot uh, that i was supposed to do that <laughs> Pop it up online. <laughs> Dublin's in shambles. People are killing each other ever. I'm starting to shout and do. It's fucking zombies. Jay? I don't want to hear any more of this shit. You mean you know about it? Well, what are we going to do? Nothing, man. It's fake news. But there's nothing coming out of Dublin at all about it. And doesn't that tell you anything? Do you know what I want to know? What? How many times will I have to tell you not to leave the door open for you? Close the bleeding thing, huh? Cover that story for me, will you? Oh, but man, I've been researching this for hours and I'm telling you, it's the apocalypse! There's no such thing as zombies, Jay. Just <sighs> get the cans. Brilliant, and that's Lou Corkin, uh, of course, on the on the left hand side yeah. there. Um, so, what's what was kind of like your inspiration, I guess, about even that scene in itself? Like, did you did it come out of nowhere? Or tell us a little bit about that. I what I, what I really wanted to focus on, like in terms of Luke's character, obviously, because the initial idea was his. He was always going to play the protagonist, um, mm. Robbie, who. Um, in typical millennial fashion, it believes everything is fake news. He's not really interested in, in all of the... The only reason that they... That like, so they find out that a, an apocalypse has, has t taken place in Dublin view, via social media, you know? So yeah. all of the news that they're getting is, is, is uh, viral videos. Yeah. So Robbie's instant reaction is, this is ridiculous. He's, he's, he's the cynic. Whereas obviously his cousin Jay, played by Luke Collins, he is insisting, no, this is real, this is legit, trust me. Uh, he's watched a few too many zombie films. And, um, and then Jay's brother, who played by Jake Devery, the Chi, comes out of the bathroom taking the, taking the mick. Yeah. So they all, uh, the, the, the family, there's four of them as well. Um, the, uh, Luke, um, Luke's character, Robbie, has a sister, Liv, played by Mary Beth Heron. Mm -hmm. And the four of them kind of have this... Um, almost distaste towards one another at times. They, 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 they rub each other the wrong way, um, which, which is obviously where the comedy comes from. But it's all, it, it, they all represent something different in terms of how I believe millennials would react in that environment. Right. And I wanted to make sure that the, like where they are in that scene, they're in their home in Offaly, you know? So they're miles away from all the action taking place in Dublin. Right. So they have no idea what's going on. And I, I wanted them to basically be, you know, they're not taking things seriously enough until it gets too late. And I genuinely believe that in this day and age, and, and I don't mind commenting on millennials because I am a millennial, right? Sure. I think that most of us would probably assume that the government's going to do something about it. So, yeah. you know, someone else out there with authority is going to deal with the problem. We don't have to do anything because at this stage, I think that we've been, we've been very uh, comfortable, pampered maybe. Sure, so, sure. Um, I think that that's probably the way it go down. So that, and then the, the comedy is, uh, comes from there squabbling up until the uh, proverbial hits the fan. Awesome. Yeah, I haven't seen the full film yet, so I'm really looking forward to, to watching it. Like, where, where can people watch it? Is it available? At the somewhere? moment, it's still on the festival circuit, Brilliant. and it probably will be, um, it will be right through the way through 2022 as well, but um, it doesn't 
prevent me from being able to release it on VOD. Okay. Um, so we are in contact with an American streaming service at the moment. And um, they are currently procuring the funding to be able to buy the film. And Fantastic. then once, it, once they do, then it'll be available on, wow. on, on there. That's their exciting channel. stuff, man. That's, that's extremely exciting. Yeah, like I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm blessed by God that this has kind of come into my lap because it's not, it's not every filmmaker who kind of will get a, uh, an offer like that, to be yeah. honest. You know, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, um, it was very fortuitous. And, and I'm, uh, yeah, uh, hopefully it's the start of something, a big, uh, yeah, a relationship with them that will lead to more, more films getting made. And, and for me, I just, I, I am obsessed with the idea of making uh, uh, authentically Irish genre films. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. I really want, I, 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 the most important thing for me when I'm thinking of making a movie is that it's high concept. I don't really like making films that have, that, you know, when you're explaining it to someone, when you explain it to someone, they don't really kind of get what it is. If I turn to someone mm. and I say it's millennials versus zombies, you kind of have an idea yeah. of what it is oh, immediately. Absolutely. You, you can explain that in half a sentence, right? right? So that's, that's perfect. It's real to you. It's relatable. Yeah. And you're tying in something like you're putting in a... Uh, what do you call it? Like a conflict yeah. into a, a basic situation that's obviously yeah. with just Irish people and yeah. and their different reactions to it, which is which is fantastic. I think yeah. having an Irish voice uh, for all of those situations would mm. like if I was able to make an Irish Western, an Irish Goonies. You know what I mean? Is like, there are people doing that at the moment? Like uh, something similar? Is there any directors or writers that are kind of similar to? I haven't seen moment? too many too many Irish genre films. To be honest, most mm. of the stuff. I mean, again, when you're like genre films can be um, very expensive to make as well. Okay. So I think for the most part, when people are doing, they're, they're making their first film, it's normally a drama because you just need to ask someone, can you get, can you get loan of their house for a couple of weeks? And yeah. you know. It's, it, it's a bit easier on yeah. the production side of things. Exactly, right? yeah. 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 Now, zombies wasn't too bad because it's literally, it's makeup and yeah. it's prosthetics and whatever. It's not, you know, it wasn't the worst thing in the world. So we're going to see some zombies in this. Oh yeah, 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 <laughs> for sure. It does. Is, does it get gruesome? How gruesome? Well, do you know what? I, I, I read someone um, commented, someone, someone tweeted about the film after watching it, I think in Indie Cork, which we just screened in last week. Mm -hmm. And um, they referred to it as having the right amount of humour and gore and scares. So I was like, okay, that's great. That's good to know. <laughs> You've got the balance know. going anyway. Yeah. And, and I didn't think of it as particularly gory myself, but it's, yeah. but it is, it's definitely violent. Yeah. Yeah. You're probably used to it now. You're probably just yeah, like... Yeah. <laughs> I, I was editing. I've seen the film about three million times, just yeah, editing yeah. it over and over again. So yeah. That's amazing. So you edited it as well, were you? you just yeah. All the yeah. Wow. This is the thing. You're like, you kind of, you know, I can't afford to hire somebody else to do it at, yeah. you know, at that stage. Uh, even now, I'm still, you know, I need to get um, funding for um, for the future projects, and then maybe I'll, I'll 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 hand off some of the jobs. But I think as far as like when you're when you want to be an auteur, which is what I'm attempting to be, then writing it, directing it, and editing it means that from start to finish, it's my vision, and yeah. I I will take all the heat then yeah. if people think it's good or bad, whatever it, you know, it's on me. Yeah. Um, and then. Well, I mean, if it's good, obviously it's it's down to the performances and the and the the tech guys involved as well. But if it's bad, I, I'll just take the blame. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course you'll you'll take it's the risk. Fun. But it, yeah. it it looks fantastic. I'm really looking forward to seeing the whole thing. I think we have another clip up as well, so we'll give people another bit of a teaser. Absolutely. Um, so Keto, if you have that ready, or do you want to stall for a little bit? It's up to you, man. What do you think? <laughs> I take it you're doing quite well. What? Well, whatever this is, must be keeping you quite busy. I'll be speaking to Sergeant Whelan before too long, I imagine. We have been busy, actually. Haven't even had a chance to drop your date home yet. <laughs> Evening all. Lovely weather, wouldn't you say? Where are you off to? Mrs Mooney down the way I said the dogs after giving her an awful do. Nearly took a chunk over her leg, apparently. So she stuck the thing with a knife. Now she wants someone to clean up the mess. She's in terrible shock. Did you call an ambulance? No, officer. I thought I'd let her bleed to death. And see if she comes back from the dead. Tomorrow at 12. Make sure you attend, all right? I'm sure I could drop by. Gotta have each other's backs, right? Fantastic! Always reminds me like of uh, Irish set Rogan or something in that that really? intro with the with the smoke or, wh or whatever he had there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, really fantastic! I, I really am looking forward to it. Um, tell is, is there anything else that like so? So you actually won six awards. 
for this already as well. Seven. So we won uh, Friday night win? just recently. Oh, uh, congratulations. Yeah. So how many, like... Um, how many festivals did you apply for? How many? That's the that's the kind of the, the sneaky secret. I mean, people don't see how many rejections you get. So there's there there is a, a significant number of festivals that we when we first set out. I'm, I mean, I'm I'm very happy to report that the very first festival we submitted to was Kerry International Film Festival, which we got into and then won. So really? that one will like a, it was their first feature. We won Best Narrative at it, and it's an Irish festival. So that will always be the one that's closest to our heart. Yeah. After that, there were a number of higher up festivals that didn't seem keen. It doesn't always necessarily mean they didn't like the, the film. It could just be that it didn't really fit in with what they, with, you know, with what they had. They, yeah, most yeah. festivals tend to go with a theme based on their submissions. Sure. So sure. Um, I kind of keep myself keep my chin up by kind of thinking along those I'm lines not, that absolutely. it wasn't. But, it was but I mean, it's, it's worldwide where you can submit these, right? So yeah, it's, absolutely. It's absolutely global. So there's so many yeah. um, options. Uh, so did you uh, film at all in during the pandemic, or was that already? Kind of no. finished by it was just released during pandemic, right? Yeah, then, yeah, it was released. Or, or you the first up with it, yeah. First screening was October 2020, and um, and yeah, so, so it's been in a few festivals, obviously, over the last year as well, and then as I say, probably going into 2022, um, and I. Like as far as the festivals are concerned, like I I did kind of course correct part way through because as I say in the beginning, you do get a few not selected, not selected notifications mm. from some festivals, and you kind of go, okay, maybe. Maybe this film isn't enough of a horror to do well in the horror festivals. Like, mm. for example, it didn't get into Ravenna, which is a huge horror film festival in Italy. Uh, it didn't get into Abattoir, which is a huge one in Wales. So I was like, okay, maybe it's not, it isn't gory enough to be a strict horror. Maybe I'll try comedy film festivals. Then we got mm. into the Gelas Comedy Film Festival in Russia. Um, we won as best horror comedy in, uh, in Seattle. So I think it's actually, it leans much more into the kind of, the, the comedy uh, tongue in cheeks um, side of things. So, mm. had, having done that course correction, it seems to be doing an even better job in festivals now than it was doing. Yeah. So sometimes you just don't know. Um, when our our um, the music composer uh, Stephen McKenna did an amazing job at kind of when we were when we were making the film, we were even saying to ourselves, "Is this a, is this a comedy? Is it a horror? Is it a family drama? What the heck is this thing?" And it was when he made the music that I, it really kind of pulled it all together and and allowed the flow to work where it could go from car, com, comedy to horror kind of seamlessly yeah, yeah. Um, and then kind of gave us a bit more of an impression that it, yeah it's a dark comedy more than anything else yeah you yeah. know um, so wow. that's yeah it's definitely leaning in that direction now as far as festivals is concerned so hopefully we'll get into a few more over the next few months that's great and then yeah please god stream a service after that and i guess will you be releasing a soundtrack as well along with that i think steven at one point steven put the soundtrack up because it was in his contract that he could do what he wanted with the soundtrack so Brilliant. i think he had it up on on um soundcloud at one stage, I don't know if you took Fantastic. it down since then, but yeah, it's definitely available uh, somewhere, I think. Great. So if you can't see the movie yet, we teased you with <laughs> you two minutes already, movie. you might be able to listen to the soundtrack on SoundCloud, which on would SoundCloud. be great, because that yeah. will give you a nice little kind of an idea as well of kind of the flow of the film. Yeah, that's true. In a way, isn't it? That's so, true, yeah. Uh, that's great. And obviously you're still in promo mode. You're still, I mean, it's, it's mad. I guess with movies, it's different, right? Because it's such a grandeur thing mm -hmm. compared to, you know, I mean, an album obviously as well is quite grandeur. Um, but movies, it seems to take a while. It's 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 a two year process, kind of. Is that a normal kind of thing where you sort of do the festival circuit for a while, then you're hoping to get snagged by a streaming service or or, yeah. or independent cinemas and things like that? Is that kind of the process? It's a long term kind of. Yeah. How absolutely. how often then would you do movies? Like, what's the kind of idea? Do you have a vision on that or? In an ideal situation, I mean, like the thing for us was as soon as Follow the Dead was ready to go, the pandemic hit, so I couldn't go out and film anything. You know, for the mm. last two years, um, I would have loved to. I have a few short films that I wanted to make so that I could kind of try out a few different things, um, just in terms of techniques and story ideas. Does this work? Does that work? You don't want to mm. try those things out on a feature film. You try them out in short, see do they work, and then you can move them into your features if you want. Yeah. So I was going to get that done. I have a few short films written, um, but of course that kind of all had to get pushed to the wayside because of the pandemic so now the things are kind of opening up a little bit again in the new year i hope to to shoot a couple of new films and then with any joy we'll be shooting the sequel to follow the dead at the end of next year Brilliant. um that's wow. the plan um as long again as long as the the funding goes okay but i've, yeah. I've got the script almost ready to, ready to go so. fantastic man fantastic and guys at home uh, feel free to add any questions or comments in you can ask adam absolutely anything yeah. Anything at all. Absolutely anything at all. He's here with us live. Yes, I can almost touch him. He's right beside me. Um, so do pop your comments in 
right now and uh, we can or, or pop your questions in more so um, and if you have anything of course uh, it's always uh, interesting I mean it's just interesting the fact that we have somebody from the film industry and um, it's exciting because we're we're used to having musicians so it's shaking up things a little bit I'm absolutely curious about so many things uh, uh, so I'm sure if you guys at home have any questions uh, to ask him now is the time because he's a busy man you ain't got time for your Facebook messages, guys. Now is the time, right? We're, we're focusing on that, so pop them in now. We also have a fun segment. We kind of forgot about that almost. Right, okay. You I'm terrified. Are you terrified? Good. But also excited. <laughs> excited. It's, a, it's a weird mix of emotions. It's a mixture of emotions. So we can crack into our fun segment, and then uh, if there's any questions in the meantime, feel free to, to pop them in, guys. I'll, I'll highlight them. And uh, my uh, person in my ear will tell me uh, if there's any questions from yourselves, so feel free to do that. Keto, are we gonna just launch into this uh, fun segment? I'm a little bit nervous too. <laughs> oh, we missed that there, oh, there we go. Can you even accent, bro? Okay. <laughs> kind of guess what, where we're kind of going with, maybe, maybe not. Right. So, Keto, do you want to hop in there and give us a bit of a run through of what we're supposed to be doing? Well, yeah. So, you know, Dave, this was very last minute, this one. <laughs> it, it looks professional. Yeah, well, yeah it looks all right. Yeah, looks yeah. Professional. Was, uh, well, you see, because, uh, you know, ourselves, we used to have music people on and all this stuff from usually at time. And there was uh, had to be a change in the schedule Keto's, this time around. So uh, you were telling me he was an actor. A lot, so, uh, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You were telling me he was an actor, but uh, yeah. so it's more acting based. <laughs> it's okay. more acting based, but Adam is very used to. Um, well, hopefully, you know, uh, movies and and things. So uh, we went we went for the kind of uh, we're gonna read out a sentence, but the people at home are gonna choose in what accent we read it out in from okay. a famous actor. <laughs> okay, how are you for accents? <coughs> I, I'm not, not too bad with some. Yeah, definitely a few are, okay. You, you've already got an advantage over me. <laughs> well, you see, now you're wrong, Dave, because that's, you didn't tell me that. <laughs> I didn't know it was meant to be a poll going at home. Yeah, so we're gonna oh, choose. You had oh, me you write them up earlier, so that's why I wrote them up. Oh, okay, okay, so Keto's gonna uh, decide on who it is. Okay, so Grant, <laughs> so scratch everything I said. And, um, so it's more, it's, um, we're imitating people rather than just the, the country? Yeah, we're imitating the person. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so it could be like... Well, that's a whole different story. Yeah, yeah, it could be Pacino, I'd, Schwarzenegger. Yeah, well, I, 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 there's only a few of them there, but I made the first one easy to kind of get you into the, you know what it is, you know? Yeah, <laughs> okay, let's see how this goes. Right, so Sylvester, who, so am I going first then? If you, if you want, it's a very simple one, but it's just oh, to show you that the, it'd be a quote from a different person. Okay. And you have to try and read it as Stallone, you know? Oh, God. Yeah, we did this before with like country accents and it just went horrible. <laughs> it went horrible. I'm so bad at this. Um, so, okay, let me, let me just... Uh, am I doing this one? Guess so. All right, so it's Get to the Chopper with uh, Sylvester Stallone. So uh, I'll get a bit of music going for you there. Get a bit of music. You got the Rocky music going? No, I don't have any of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Copyright infringement. Oh yeah, actually, yeah, you're right. Uh, Adrian, get yeah. to the chopper. <laughs> get to the chopper. It's not bad. Get, uh, get to the chopper. All right, that's it. I'm done. No more. That's. I'm glad you gave me a short one. Okay. Yeah, because they, they get longer. We're gonna. Oh, they get longer as they come along. Okay, so that's my one. Guys in the chat, you can let us know uh, whose accent you think is better. Each round, we've got three rounds. So uh, I did my one there, and... Uh, I have to do Arnie on my days. Adam's got to do Arnie. Wow, that's a long one. It Come on, that's a bit... That, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's very so long. It's, okay. it's, it's a Rocky uh, quote. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. You, me, or nobody is going to hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit, it's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward, that's how winning is done. That's very that's good, good, man. <laughs> what? I'm gonna give well, him I'm gonna give him a, a thumbs up. Give him a thumbs up, right. That <laughs> oh, was I forgot great. to give you your uh da -da. <laughs> <laughs> An all too familiar sound for me, uh, but that was very good accent. Yeah, it's pretty I, good. I was man. terrified. I, yeah, yeah. So you I was a bit really worried well. getting this made up because I didn't know how 
Anyone would be able to do I'm loving it. the pictures. I'm loving the effort on this one. <laughs> I'm loving it. Okay, so let's see next. Dwayne Johnson, so The Rock. Okay. Oh, geez, I, these are kind of tough, like. Mm. Uh, very specific, <laughs> great photo. Well, I'll throw myself off there. Um, I I'm missing the, the side of that word, actually. Um, abs, is it? Is it abs? Okay, yeah. So, uh, let me try and just picture a scene with him first. Not that it's going to help at all. Um, well, I'll tell you who it was. It was Derek Zoolander's uh, quote. Oh yeah, no, I know that. I'm just trying to picture a scene with The Rock in it, because yeah. uh, I, I can't even remember his, his voice. Just do it like what he was when he was a wrestler. He did a lot of pauses If you and stuff, smell! Didn't he? <laughs> I can't. I, ju <laughs> ju just because we have chiseled abs and stunning features doesn't mean that we still cannot die in a free gasoline fight accident. <laughs> 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 that's it, that, in fairness, that was a hard one. That was yeah, hard. That was a hard. That one. was hard. Play the sound. Let's just get it over with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play the sound. <laughs> I had something else there for you, didn't I? Yay! Yay! Oh, that's a boo. Oh. That's a boo. Yeah, cool, cool. We're all next. It started one. positive and then went negative. <laughs> oh wow. I'm glad God. I didn't get him. Like this, this guy is a hard. I'd say you do a good one. It's, he's actually more difficult to get than... He is quite difficult, isn't he? Okay. <laughs> what is your name? <laughs> it doesn't matter what your name is. If you can smell what The Rock is cooking. <laughs> wow, that is <laughs> fucking great, man. What the fuck? I don't think I did the, did the voice right. It's just the pauses. Uh, yeah, I, think no, you know, I, think, I think you've got the high kind of... At the end, at kind the of end. quite well, yeah. No, that, was, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Great. All right, let's see. Samuel Jacks. Oh my God, guys. <laughs> Just put an f bomb everywhere. <laughs> and that's actually a Christopher Rockin quote. Is it? Okay, yeah. okay. I'm motherfucking sick of these motherfucking snakes. <laughs> I haven't killed anybody since 1984. God damn his soul to burn for eternity in fucking hell for making me my hands dirty. I'll actually give you, I'll give you. A, it was all right. I see what you were trying to do there. You were trying to like get into the role. He does shout a lot as well. He does, he does, he does. Uh, Sean's, giving you, Sean's giving you a total hard time here. Yeah. <laughs> it's good we can't hear him. I think it was about four out of ten there from him. I'll take it. I'll give I'll you about it. a seven for... Seven? I'll give you a seven. I wish my, my chat isn't updated, and I have to update my chat to see what you guys at home are saying. And we've got one last one uh, for Adam. Oh, wow. Ben Stiller. How okay. Ben Stiller? That's a tough one. Oh, can I do it as Zoolander? Oh, you do Zoolander. Yeah, well, I'll do it as yeah, Zoolander. Yeah, yeah. And it's uh, it's Marlon Brando quote from, from Godfather. Uh, okay. Now you come and, and say, Don Corleone, give me justice, but you don't ask with respect. You don't offer friendship. You don't even think to call me Godfather. Brilliant! Wow, <laughs> that's fucking good. Ah, yes. Fantastic! Only for the fact that I had to do it as Zoolander. Yeah, just, well, just, just Ben Stiller, I was going nowhere. He's quite plain, other like you, you need to get him on a character, so yeah, he, yeah, it's quite definitely. subtle, I suppose. So no, that's that's really good. You might, Jesus, there you go. This might inspire you to get back into acting. You never know. Like, <laughs> as an impressionist. Oh, we got another one. Oh no, we got. Oh yeah, that's that's the quote. Are we doing Marlon? Oh, I'm doing one now as well. Oh Jesus, Marlon Brando. Put an egg in your mouth. Yeah, I just put my. T I took my tongue in my front lip. <laughs> and it's a quote from Conor McGregor. <laughs> why, why would I want to train at the bum gym? I train my own people. I have since the day one. That man needs to get his facts straight before I roll in the gym and buy that gym. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I make no. you an offer I cannot, you cannot refuse. <laughs> That's probably well, the best I got, one I got Connor That was the best one I did. That was the best one I did. Oh, do I have to do Connor? You got to do Connor. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's weird because <laughs> it's an Irish accent. Okay. He over enunciates at the end of certain yes. words as well, doesn't he? Yeah. Really? Okay. I have had it with these goddamn snakes. 
on this goddamn plane. <laughs> That's, that was the worst one I did. Easily, easily. <laughs> it's too, so much like, used, it's too close to the actors, Yeah, it's very close to home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Yeah, cool. That's it. <laughs> Thank God. I hope I don't have to do another one now. Because that, that, I, I, I don't think I could do, put myself through that again. <laughs> Do you, Do you even accent, it? bro? Thanks so much, uh, Keto, for setting that up for us. Really appreciate it. Nice Bit of crack, kind of tosses a load of stuff in the air. Very random, kind of puts <laughs> us uh, out of our comfort zone. Hey, did you enjoy that? I actually, yeah, I enjoyed that a lot more than I, I, I said to you when I came in, just don't have me dancing. Everybody so, uh, keeps saying that after the dancing <laughs> episode, and I keep saying, yes, we're going to do dancing. We're going to bring it back. But he needs a trophy just for doing it. Yeah, no, true, yeah. true. It is, it, it really, because you're out of the seat, like, as in you're out of your comfort zone. I'm behind the desk, you're sitting on the comfy couch, and then you have to kind of get up and do something. And I don't see any whiskey, so I, I wasn't, wasn't, wasn't going to be moving at all. No, uh, I mean, maybe that, that'll that be the, do the trick. Maybe we Probably. need to get a whiskey going or something um, that might, uh, yeah, Lubricate the feet, bit lubricate the joints, bit of Jameson, absolutely. Well, Jameson, if you're a sponsor out there, you know, um, <laughs> you know, uh, you know our email at this stage. And guys at home, yeah, I don't have the chats up. I actually don't have the thing, um, unfortunately, so I can't see your comments at the moment. Um, but uh, thanks for sticking with us, and uh, we'll check it out now. I might, I might see if there's any questions coming up uh, because we missed a little bit of our Q and A here. We got um, Norveg Seven. Will Adam join you in your sketches in the future? Ooh, that sounds like a question for me. You're supposed to ask Adam questions. Um, what do you think, Adam? Would you like to uh, join us on one of our sketches? I'm happy to do some sketches, yeah, yeah? absolutely. Great. I mean, you're a very, very, you're a very busy man. Vezzy you're a very busy. busy man. So, um, I mean, we'd love to, we'd love to have you. It'd be great to work with, um, uh, with some actors um, nice and not myself for change, <laughs> um, especially after those uh, accents, those impersonations. Um, Adam, Sean, son of Mick. Thanks for the specification there. Adam, are you going to sing in a future soundtrack? Yeah, I, Sean, son of Mick, is a friend of mine and he uh, he knows well how much I, I I have to do my absolute best to fight myself away from a microphone, normally speaking, because, uh, yeah, anytime I get a chance to sing. I was at my brother's wedding before I gave my, my best man speech, I started singing into the microphone. So, yeah, I'm, I'm almost certainly going to make my, uh, my way into a soundtrack at some point. Great, great. <laughs> Um, so, like, wh with regard to singing, actually, would it be something that you would see as, like, ever taking up on a, not necessarily a professional level, but having a band, would that be something that you'd like to do at any stage, or has it been something that ever crossed your mind? It was the first thing that ever crossed my mind. I was, I was singing as early as I could talk, and I would have absolutely loved to, like, yeah, being a pop star, rock star, whatever, would have been my number one dream, to be honest. And um, I kind of, I, I always just kind of had the feeling that it was the hardest thing to, like, I can make my own movies and they will, uh, you know, with, with any joy getting other people that are talented involved, they will be successful. But trying to become a famous artist, I think is probably, like a musician, is probably the hardest thing in the world to do. And I have so much respect for anybody who, who gives it a go and actually, makes them something of themselves from doing it because I just think it just seems to me to be such a, a difficult market to break into so I, that's why I kind of I went with my second love which was movies but music was mm. was number one yeah that's 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 really interesting it's like people in the music industry would see like oh my god it's so hard to to do a movie I mean all the work <laughs> that's involved maybe I just had my wires crossed but I I just felt like making movies was, was a simpler thing to be honest yeah no that's that, that's absolutely you have full control from start to finish I think with, yeah. the, with the music you know you, you can't make music without a good producer like it's so much mm. harder to, to do all of your own stuff um I don't play any instruments I just sing so uh, Enya's asking can you give us a few bars a few bars. <laughs> you have the mic in front of you. I think she means uh, of singing yeah. now, not a... Uh... <laughs> a few bars of... Um, like, yeah, but what, what, are we, uh, what are we talking? Don't worry, we're not going to put you on the... <laughs> exactly, yeah, what are, what are we talking? Uh, go for When, when you're told to most... sing, you can't think of a song, that's the problem. That's true. It's, it, it was like, you know, when we were talking about uh, the accents, we were like, oh, we should have a sentence to say because it's like... It's like sometimes I get asked, you know, my parents are Polish, and it's like, oh, say something in Polish. And I'm like, <laughs> I just say something, the word in Polish, like, because I can't think. Uh, but I'm just seeing your comments there, guys. Thanks for popping them all in. We missed you out for a little bit. Um, but uh, good to see you. Uh, Andy's asking, how are you planning on raising the funding for your next film? 
So I think we spoke about it a little yeah, bit. Yeah, just with the with the the American um, streaming service that are looking to buy Follow the Dead, it, they they have expressed an interest in the sequel as well. So that will be the next feature if that all goes ahead. If not then it'll be a case of, of um, probably submitting scripts to Screen Ireland, which is kind of the, the typical Irish way of doing it. you got to impress somebody in there. Great, great. Lucid Dream for ages. More cowbell. Yeah, for the Christopher Walken <laughs> uh, segment. There you go. Uh, oh, so you got 100%. So eight people voted, although your name is Sean up here for some reason. I think Josh had a little bit of a confusion with the names. But we know, we know who you are. Who you mean? Uh, that's great. Sean Adam William. Uh, and Sean says, uh, "What kind of bars? Whisper Mars and Twix." Um, Adam, uh, it's been an absolute pleasure having Thanks you on the show. Me. Thanks for uh, breaking us into the film industry, a fascinating industry, um, something that you know I'm very highly interested in, and it's just great to see you again after. I mean, it's been a couple of years, so yeah, it's great yeah. to see you doing so well. I wish you the very best um, for, uh, obviously, the future endeavours, the future project. But, of course, with Follow the Dead, there's still so much more uh, to see from that. Obviously, the whole movie as well. I can't wait for it to come out. So do let us know when it does come we'll out for do, us absolutely. to watch. Cheers. And, um, yeah, is there anything else you wanted to finish on? Is there anything you'd like to say before we let you go? No, can I just comment on, like, thanks. First of all, thanks for having me in. It's the first studio interview that I've done. It was great. Uh, I love what you're doing. And, guys, honestly, this studio is tremendous. Like, fair play. It's absolutely a wonderful wonderful, wonderful um, uh, set and I think the production value in here is obviously amazing so from a, from a filmmaker I'm obviously going to comment on the production value. Oh, <laughs> so, well, there you go that's, that's, that's absolutely perfect maybe we'll get you in to record a song or something for the for the next one you never know like yeah. uh, get you singing I'd love it I'd love it yeah that's awesome so that's um, uh, Adam uh, William Cattle, guys, um, his information is in the description below, by the way. You can check him out right now, and uh, you can check out all the details um, on Follow the Dead, and of course, uh, all of his other movies, uh, which he acted and then also directed as well. Uh, so do check it out. Um, on a note, actually, yeah, guys, have you have you been receiving like those scam calls lately? Like, have you have you ever gotten Every other of those? day. It's crazy, isn't it? There's like so many of them now. It's over the um, top. Yeah, it's absolutely crazy. Keto, have you been getting those? And let us know in the comments section, guys, as well. Have you been getting scam calls? It's a massive thing now. I yeah, think our well, numbers are out. Yeah, ever since the HSE got bleeding, uh, where am I? I'm down there. I go up here. Ever since they got hacked, didn't they? Yeah. Bleeding. Yeah, it's 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 such a nuisance because you don't like you, you think it's somebody important ringing you. You never know. You have to kind of answer them pretty much. Like, and um, so I got scam called there recently as well, and uh, they're getting really high tech with it. Like, I actually thought it was a mate ringing me, and yeah. Anyway, I'll pl I'll play the clip. Keto, do you have the clip there? Hello. 